answer each question. Red lights visible to candidates when time expires. And in a big win for the Biden campaign, given that Trump is a rule breaker, the other candidate who's not speaking will be muted when it's not their turn. Now, that in theory applies to both of them. But of course, more practically, having to wait your turn to speak is something that will affect Trump's style of debate, if you want to call it that. There were a lot of interruptions last time. I'm not going to answer the question Why because, would you answer that because question? the you question is a lot of the new question Supreme is Court justice, the radical question, left. Will you shut who is up, your, man? Listen, who is- uh, you, you know, he, something he might have wanted to say for a long time. A lot of people wanted to say that was then speaking to the, the at the time the president. Um, they did get progress on these rules. Will that matter or what will matter next it, week? Well, if I was a gambler, actually, I am a gambler. Yeah, I, I take even money. Trump doesn't show up. <laughs> okay, I just think I you think don't think Trump's coming next week. I, I, no, I mean, I don't know. But if I was, I think he's going to wake up and say and decide. Uh, he just like he said he was going to testify in his defense of his trial. He mm-hmm. put on a defense. He's let, let him show up. I wouldn't be shocked, but I, I certainly would not be surprised if you gave me even money. I'd say he's a no show. He'll just get up mm-hmm. in the morning. I'm just not going to do it. You've been around these campaigns. Uh, everything is the way it is until it isn't. Right. This commission used to run it. And that was like you had to deal with them. And the Biden campaign basically said uh, they had to go around them to get the terms they wanted. Was that a smart call? I think so. But if, if the debate goes off and mm-hmm. if the president does well and if he interjects this new information into the bloodstream, you're going to say that it's worth it. it. Now, if the debate goes off and he doesn't do well, then it, you're going to say it's a mistake. But I, w- I, I was happy. I'm happy that they're doing it. It's unusual. It, it, it's June. You usually don't do it. You don't start them till September. But the, the world was not the same as it used to be. Mm-hmm. But you just got to adapt to it. But I'm I'm glad they're doing it. And I think he's going to, you know, I think they're going to have good prep. They have good people uh, prepping the president. And but I'm still skeptical that Trump shows up. That's interesting because I haven't heard that point as much. Why do you think Biden and the Democrats feel that getting this going early is so vital? Well, the, first of all. This race is stuck. I, I learned when I was working in Israel, the Hebrew word for stuck is tekua. Mm-hmm. Okay? The, the, we're, we're stuck. I look at the poll and averages. I look where we were. We have all this new information that comes in. It changes. A, 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 you know, if it's not hard enough, you can see some change, but you really got to look. And I think the Biden, I think the president needs this intervening event. I think he can, he can really, you know, score. On the Supreme Court, particularly, I, it, I think that that's an issue. We're winning elections on, and you got to drive it home that he is appointing people that don't believe in an inherent right to privacy and don't believe the Supreme Court should operate under ethics enforced gift ban. And he cannot hit that hard enough. You just cannot repeat people. If you don't have an, a, a gift ban by the June the 21st, 2025, we're not going to appropriate any money. We're not funding a renegade branch of government mm-hmm. that operates under its own rules. And, and the, yeah, as you say, that puts and that's not even a partisan point, although the way the right wing has defended right. them, it can feel like for some reason they're pro corruption or pro right. gifts. But, but as you said, are. you get you got a salary, you got a pension. And unfortunately, these days, what you need, you also got security uh, extras there at the court. Huh? Great. Why do you need gifts from a Republican donor who has assigned a Hitler book in his house? A, a, a private in the army has a, a, operates under some government, a, a cabinet <laughs> secretary, the entire everybody in the United States government, including President Biden, it has regulations yep. on gifts they can take. And for, for, for good reason, Constance is $4 million worth of gifts. Alito goes on a fancy fishing trip and on a G5 to Alaska. And he says, well, I, there was an empty seat on a plane. I was out at Signature Aviation at Dulles. I was kind of hitchhiking. And this guy comes up and says, hey, yeah. you need a ride to a fancy fishing yeah. lot? All right. And how, how is a, how's a teacher going to tell a third grader you got to fess up and tell the truth if a Supreme Court justice can fess up and tell the truth? That's fair. Well, it's not all uh, rainbows and sunshine here. <laughs> We think we knew that he told the big oil companies that for a billion dollars you can write your own plan. But guess what? Not everyone knows that. So I'm I'm just saying I value new information Mm -hmm. over devastating information that that everybody knows. And and hopefully we can get some of that during a debate to to start a a, a real discussion here, because there, there, there are a lot of good issues that are coming up. The, the, the tax cuts, the subsidies for health care are coming up. 
So that, there's some real opportunity there. Do you think in the debate next week, then, the, the conviction is something that Biden leans into and brings up to say, what, what are we doing here with a felon? Or again, you kind of got to move past well, We all know that 12 members of your community found you guilty of 34 different felonies. I'm not here to repeat 34 different felonies. I'm here to tell you. Right. Well, I didn't mean to repeat it. I just say you did find him guilty. I guess I did say that. We did know that you've been found liable for, I don't know, half a billion dollars. Uh, but I don't not, I don't want to dwell in the past. I want to I want to project to the future. Right. <laughs> yeah. Damning with a little gotta, review. Yeah. You got to be a little. Yeah. Little pivot. You know, you can you can have a little fun with it because what you're saying is accurate. And, and I'm more interested not in your past conviction. I'm interested what's going to happen to these tax cuts. How Here's some exclusive video we obtained of the president at a fun fundraiser just over the weekend. Institutions matter. And this president what he did on January the 6th. He's here he's saying now, he said, if he doesn't win, there'll be a bloodbath. It's outrageous what he's talking about. It's outrageous what he's talking about. Hard to argue with that. Starting us off tonight is Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff of California. Congressman, it's great to see you. And I'm looking forward to talking to you about this because you know so much as somebody who was on the select committee that investigated January 6th about these events, what led up to them. And we've talked a lot about this before, but I kind of just went through some of the language that Trump, Laura Trump, Steve Bannon and others have been using in recent days and weeks. And it seems to me like they're laying the groundwork for another effort. But I want to know what you hear from it. Is it, is it something different from what led up to 2020 or is it similar in your view? Uh, it's similar and it's even worse, particularly when you hear Steve Bannon basically saying, you know, fight or die, uh, because Trump is doing what he did uh, prior to the last election, which is laying the seeds that if he loses, that he will challenge it as illegitimate, that there's no way he can lose. And, you know, look, the thing that Donald Trump fears more than anything else is being labeled a loser. He's probably even more willing to be called a felon than he is a loser. But he's a loser uh, and he's desperately afraid that he may lose again. And if he does lose again, he wants to challenge the results. And so he is laying the foundation. But we saw with even less incendiary rhetoric uh, four years ago that it led to a violent uh, confrontation, uh, mm -hmm. a mob descending on the Capitol. Uh, now that they are just escalating the rhetoric, probably with even greater fears of losing and, you know, added to this for Trump, I think he feels if he doesn't win, he's going to jail. And so he has all the more reason to contest any losing result. But it is more the same, but even more dangerous. You know, one of the things we, we talk about a lot here on the show is, is just how much we should be concerned about something, because we're not trying to scare people. His rhetoric is certainly scary, but he has tried to whip up his supporters to show up around his court appearances. He hasn't been successful. At the same time, again, this language is scary. How, how should you, as you're, as you're talking to your neighbors, as you're campaigning across California, what are you telling people about the level of concern they should have? Well, I'm encouraged by the fact that, as you say, he encouraged people to rise up if he were prosecuted. They didn't rise up. There wasn't this massive protest. He was convicted. Uh, it caused barely a stir, I think, among uh, his most uh, rabid base uh, in terms of any public protest. But at the same time, you can't discount uh, the chance that if he loses again, when he loses again, uh, that he will go to even greater lengths uh, to try to overturn the results. Uh, and what I do tell people is the worst case scenario is that the result is close. So uh, top Democratic strategist James Carville is out with a new prediction about whether or not he thinks Donald Trump will show up to the presidential debate next week. Well, if I was a gambler, actually, I am a gambler. Yeah, I take even money. Trump doesn't show up. <laughs> OK, I just think I you think don't think Trump's coming next week. I, I, no, I mean, I don't know. But if I was, I think he's going to wake up and say and decide. Uh, he just like he said he was going to testify in his defense of his trial. He put, he put on a defense. He's let, let him show up. I wouldn't be shocked, but I, I certainly would not be surprised if you gave me even money. I'd say he's a no show. He'll just get up <laughs> more. I'm just not going to do it. No, I, I don't think the guy can. Mike Barnacle, I, I, I love listening to James. That's James being James. But I don't think Donald Trump can avoid uh, a, a, a microphone, lights and an audience of 
tens of millions of people watching him. No, he'll be there, but the odds are, I, I would bet that he goes haywire during the debate when his microphone mm -hmm. is shut off. I bet he just, he, <laughs> he'll act up over that, no doubt, but yeah, yeah. he's got to show up. He's got to show up. He'll be there. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Jonathan Lemire? Any, any reporting uh, to, uh, that, that would line up with what James Carville said, or, or are they, they planning ahead? Because we've talked about Joe Biden's preparing. Donald Trump doesn't really prepare for anything. You can read the first three pages of Art of the Deal, and you see that it's sort of his, his, his way of, uh, of doing business and politics is just showing up and seeing what happens. Yeah. Yeah, no, there, there's no reporting to back that up. In fact, Trump aides in recent days have said that Trump has started to prepare for the debate. They're not claiming he's doing full-fledged rehearsals, but they say he's he's starting to go through some possible lines of attack and and, and defense. Um, mm -hmm. But there is an expectation he'll be there. But but what Carville said, some Democrats have been saying all along this idea that they feel like Trump will be the one to back out of this, that he has perhaps too much to lose, in part because he's ahead in the polls, narrowly, to be clear, narrowly, um, but has been consistently ahead in some of these battleground states. Uh, but I, I don't think that's the case. I think for these, both of these men will be there, and the night looms really large for both. And there's been so much discussion uh, about, you know, whether President Biden can have a good performance that night, will he, whether he'll be able to, to deliver, whether he'll be able to sort of, you know, quiet the doubts about his age and fitness for the job. And as we have covered time and again, he certainly did uh, during the State of the Union this year. He has in other big moments the Biden campaign feels like this is actually a real opportunity yep. to change the trajectory of the mm -hmm. race uh, and to remind voters, hey, Donald Trump, you haven't really listened to him in four years. Here he is. Trump also hasn't debated in a long time. There's a chance that uh, his performance may not be strong at all. Michael Steele, this is going to be uh, this is going to be a nerve wracking debate for both sides. You know, wondering if if their fighters, their aged fighters, are going to be able to get through the 15 rounds. So I think there are going to be a lot of, of staff members on both sides, a lot of Americans sort of holding their breath, whistling past the graveyard, whatever you, however you want to call it. Yeah. What, what, is, what, what, what do you think is, give us a tell of the tape here. What are you looking for in this debate? What do you think we're going to see? What do we need to look for as viewers? So let me just put on the record that uh, I have been where James Carville is uh, since they announced this debate. Um, I, I, really? I, the, the, political, the political incentives are not there for Donald Trump to do this, let alone, um, uh, to your point about wanting to get in front of tens of millions of people. Well, he had that chance during the Republican primary where he could have owned the stage and wiped the floor with these guys, but he didn't take it. Um, it's not a strength for him. He knows it. Um, and the hype, uh, particularly, and this is the thing to look for. And for me, uh, an, a very important aspect of this debate is not what these candidates say, but how these candidates react. So people are torn, but it certainly looks like old Donnie is chickening out. And this is big. He's even getting humiliated by people in the media, but also top Democratic representatives in the House, uh, soon to be in the Senate in the case of Schiff. But... The reality is that um, Donald Trump, in many ways, fears the pokey, fears getting locked up, orange jumpsuit, all of that. Of course, any reasonable person would, even an unreasonable person like Trump fears prison. He should fear prison because he's about to go there, at least in my view, uh, especially when you factor in the other felonies he hasn't yet been tried for, but I think he'll be convicted of. But the reality is he fears being a loser. And one of the ways he can avoid being a loser in his mind is all of the schemes he's trying to pull, but also by just not playing like a toddler. It's like, well, I can't lose if I don't play. And that's why I do think there's a strong possibility he's not going to show up to the debate. And he's confirming that right now with his body language and his actions and all of that. Now, ultimately, does he show up? We don't know. But right now, I tend to agree with Carville that the indications from Trump are confirming a chickening out. 